Six months ago, I warned that effectively, Intel Arc was canceled. And no, I didn't mean back then that literally no Alchemist products would ever launch. I mean, by then the A380 was already out, so of course I couldn't have meant that. What I meant is that based on the amount of adjustments, cancellations, and pessimism I was seeing behind the scenes, that Intel would not be a proper competitor to Radeon and NVIDIA graphics for the foreseeable future, and that people should stop hoping that they were going to save the graphics graphics market. Specifically, what I stated was that Alchemist would be a messy launch with low volume and bad drivers, and that Battle Mage, from what I was seeing, was already being downgraded to a mid-range or low-end lineup at best, while Celestial, although still having more things enabled back then, still was seeing a significant portion of its lineup axed years before it came out, and also that most importantly, Intel had all but concluded already that they simply could not afford to support a full graphics lineup with any of these upcoming generations for years. And, well, the overwhelming majority of the tech press came to the defense of Raj Ghadori, with some claiming that he crushed my rumors when he pointed to a roadmap that had already missed a lot of its milestones. And no matter how you thought about it back then, Half a year later, AXG is dead, and the person who supposedly crushed my rumors no longer works for Intel. And I don't want to dwell on this subject, Roger Kadori leaving Intel for too long before I get to the juicy Battle Mage and Celestial information I'm sure you're all far more interested in. But there are a couple of things that I've learned today or really double confirmed from my sources that I feel are important for people to understand. And really, it all centers around this fact. Don't doubt it, Raja Kadori was pushed out of Intel. You see, back in December, when he was demoted, they stripped away all of his abilities to make major decisions at the companies. And then that evaluation about canceling ARC products, I'm told it was kicked into high gear, or really, I've already told you that in videos for months now. And, well, if you're Raja Kadori and you're sitting there and you see that you no longer can make any major decisions for graphics, and also Intel is axing upcoming products left and right and may kill all of ARC, you would be dumb to not be already coming up with an exit strategy. And I'm sure Roger Kadori was. And if there's any doubt about how Pat feels towards Raja, I was actually sent this morning the internal email to the entire company about his departure. Or really, it was an email that in the fine print <laughs> mentioned his departure. And make no mistake here. I am directly told by multiple people who work at Intel that someone that got to the level of Roger Kadori would normally have a separate email only telling you that he's leaving. And then maybe like half a week later, like on a Friday, they would group in his departure with a bunch of other announcements just to remind you again that he's leaving and overall what's going on. But they didn't do that. There was no early announcement thanking Raja, only talking about his accomplishments and leaving. He was just one of the final things mentioned in a long email where Pat said he had mixed emotions about his departure. Looking at the amount of prominence Pat's given Raj's departure, I can guess which emotions are in that mix. And they aren't good ones. And that's really all I have to say about Raja's departure. I don't think it really surprises anybody at this point. Although, I gotta say that... Arc is falling apart quicker than even I expected. Look, I wasn't kidding. I was sure about what I said half a year ago, that Arc is effectively canceled. But I guess I didn't think it would all fall apart this quickly. I mean, it's only been five months since the A770 launched, and already AXG is dead, Raja is gone, and Intel's retail partners are resorting to desperate pricing to liquidate inventory. But then here we go. Is it over? Is it not just effectively canceled for the foreseeable future, but are things going so badly that it is time to put a fork all the way in Intel Arc? Is it worse than effectively canceled? I'm going to address that soon, but first an ad from a sponsor. Jessie here loves bones, but it wouldn't be healthy for her to constantly eat them as much as she would love that. The same is usually true for reasonably priced instant meals. It can feel like you're stuck whenever you're looking for something that's quick to cook, tasty, healthy, and cheap all at the same time 
Well, unless you just choose Vite Ramen, this piece of content is sponsored by Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a delicious American-crafted source of protein and nutrients that takes minutes to make without sacrificing taste. This includes their classic packages that make it easy to add protein and other ingredients of your choice while it cooks, and also their Ramen Go packages that offer a healthy, microwavable option for those who truly only have 15 minutes free for lunch, whether you're working from the office or you're working at home. With Fight Ramen, you'll never be too busy to eat healthy either way. So click the link in the description and use the offer code BROKENSILICON to save 10% off on a variety of different products, including special bundles for Moore's Law is Dead fans, raw nudes if you want to make up your own recipes, Fight Go packages and other food products and cooking utensils and more. Whatever you'd prefer, using the offer code BROKENSILICON and even just clicking the link in the description really helps Moore's Law is Dead tremendously and it helps you save money on a tasty, quick-to-make lunch meal. Try Vite Ramen today. All right, so what happens next for Intel Arc releases? Or a better way to put it, what hasn't been canceled behind the scenes yet based on what my sources have told me? Well, over the past few months, I've accumulated and summarized this information that I feel today is the right day to release. So this year, 2023, Alchemist may still see a few new SKUs get released, and some of those may have new steppings. That would suggest higher clocks, maybe minor bug fixes, and that Intel actually ordered new silicon from TSMC to make it. But they're not going to do that unless they can get rid of their old alchemist dies that are still sitting there on store shelves and so i'm not a hundred percent sure we will see new steppings yet but there's still a good chance a couple of new skus from alchemist will come out now but none of them should ex be expected to be some gigantic alchemist plus increase like i've talked about for months now there was a plan for some much bigger revision version of alchemist to come out but that was canceled and anything you're seeing coming out this year from alchemist is either from silicon they already produced in early 2022 or best case scenario a slight stepping revision to have a little bit more supply before the end of the year because well battle mage is not planned to launch until the second half of next year and right now i can only confirm that there is still a 250 millimeter square die planned that will utilize the tsmc four nanometer node i'm told that this die has 12 gigabytes of ram and so it's therefore likely a 192 bit bus and if that's it yeah i know 12 gigabytes is less than 16 gigabytes but like i said Intel's being a lot less ambitious moving forward as they don't have the money to support a ton of loss leader products and graphics right now. However, although multiple sources have told me that the top Battle Mage die is canceled, I can't quite 100% confirm that just yet. And I'm going to leave it at that because any more information about why I'm saying that could give away sources. But I guess what I would say is it hasn't been confirmed to all people that would know about it yet, but it does not seem like it's progressing. And at a minimum, that means that the lead die, the lead thing that's going forward with development with Battle Mage is that 250 millimeter squared die, which again, sounds like it could be powerful today, but it's not coming out today. It's coming out in a year and a half and will likely be competing with like three nanometer or four nanometer RDNA 4 and Blackwell. So this will be a low end product if that's all they manage to launch. But how powerful will it likely be? Well, it's too early for me to say an exact number yet, especially when we look at how far below expectations Alchemist achieved. So I think it'd be ridiculous of me to say any firm number, but I'm going to put it this way. A770 to B770, if that 250 millimeter squared die is indeed used for the B770, that's about the die size change that we saw from the 3070 Ti from NVIDIA to the 4070 Ti. You see, the 3070 Ti has a slightly smaller die than the A770 that's out now, and the 4070 Ti has a slightly bigger die than that Battle Mage one. And so if we go to Tech Power Up, look at 3070 Ti to 4070 Ti. Yeah, that was about a 42% performance increase. And well, if we add 42% roughly to the performance of the A770, comically, it actually places around that 3070 Ti in performance. Uh, and, you know, to anyone that says that's not fair, this comparison I'm making because maybe Battle Mage is more efficient at using its silicon than Alchemist, that might be a fair point. But understand this. 
that 250 millimeter squared die is actually 14% smaller than the 4070 Ti. Uh, the A770 is actually a little bigger than the 3070 Ti's die size. And NVIDIA, to get that 42% performance increase, they went from 8 nanometer to 4 nanometer. Intel's only going from 6 to 4 nanometer. So I actually think, if anything, that 42% performance increase, if that is the top configuration, that's an optimistic scenario. And yeah, I don't think a mid-range level of performance that's two generations old is going to be that exciting a year and a half from now. And it's even less exciting when you see what comes after Battle Mage. Celestial, I'm told, launches in the first half of 2026. And it is a single die without a doubt right now. There is nothing else going on in development. That's 180 millimeters squared. So, yeah, I mean, it might use M3X, but again, we're talking a while from now. And AMD and NVIDIA will be there as well. And that's a small die size. And that, that maybe that informs you guys better why I've been saying I don't expect anything out of Intel graphics, but low-end stuff that is meant to keep the driver team on life support for the foreseeable future. And so there you go. I actually don't think the information I put out today is that different overall from what I said six months ago. I've only provided you with more specifics. Basically, hopefully, now you understand where I'm coming from. Every month for the past six months, something behind the scenes has been canceled or something publicly, like Rialto Bridge, has been canceled. Every month, I either see a press release or a source tell me, hey, that one configuration, that is now gone. And so the trajectory has remained negative for me up until now. And, well, let's answer that question that I posed in the title of this video. Can we finally put a fork in ARC? Is it not just effectively canceled, but should you just write it off entirely already? And it's actually a nuanced answer I'm going to give here. From my perspective, Intel stuck a fork in ARC when it failed to launch in the first quarter of last year. You see, I don't really think it was that important if the A770 competed with a 3070 versus a 3060, nor do I think Battle Mage will fail based on if it can compete with a 4070 Ti or a 4060. What mattered back then and what will matter for Battle Mage is if the drivers are good and if it launches on time. If Intel launched a 3060 competitor with fully working drivers one year ago during the shortages, it would have sold like hotcakes at $400. And if Battle Mage can have some product that is genuinely price performance competitive, not just in a misleading way, but genuinely price performance competitive with NVIDIA and AMD's latest stuff, while well, having fully functional drivers, I think they can take a small amount of market share and they can continue to develop and start taking some of their future product lines off life support. But if they release Battle Mage late and the drivers are still bad, that is what made it fail, not the overall performance. And in fact, it does seem like what's going on behind the scenes right now, according to one of my best sources at Intel, is that they haven't made the final, final decision just yet. You see, one of my best sources gave me a final warning before I started recording this video. This person told me, that Druid still seems to have three full dies planned for launch in the first half of 2027. So that's just a year after Celestial, that single die, as of right now. Yes, a lot of things can change in four years, but at the same time, most products take three to five years to develop. Thus, Pat is likely funding early work on Druid to this day, which he wouldn't be wasting money on if he had already made the final decision on all of Intel graphics for the next 10 years. Overall, this person would suggest that while Intel graphics could be an uncompetitive zombie for the next three years, they may decide to reboot the brand with a big push again in four years. And although alternatively, they also may <laughs> decide to cancel Druid entirely, if they start to think Battle Mage will be a complete flop, that hasn't quite happened yet. So basically what I'm saying is from my perspective, well, 
Intel put a fork in ARC in the beginning of 2022 when it missed its launch time frame for the A770, the launch time frame that would have actually worked out. And since then, they've basically just been axing little things back and forth here and there. And yeah, I, I'm right. Intel ARC is effectively canceled for the foreseeable future. 2027 is a long time away. But I am saying there is a narrow chance that if Battlemage turns out okay, that maybe, just maybe, Intel can take this fork that they left in Alchemist and pull it out in the distant future. And that is just going to about do it for this video. Well, except for one more thing. And it's something I feel like I just have to say every now and then to make something important clear. I have never been rooting for ARC to fail. And anyone who has followed my channel for a few years knows how excited I was about the hopeful success of a third competitor in the graphics market. And I was very enthusiastic for a while until, well, until I got information that suggested that everybody was being taken for a ride and that ARC was not going to succeed. And if we're being honest, guys, all Intel ARC has succeeded in doing up until now is make Radeon and NVIDIA look good, which is not helping competition in this market at all. And so I just want to make that clear. When I say things are negative about an Intel, NVIDIA, or AMD product, it's because I've gotten information that they are negative. And the people that put their heads in the sand when I started ringing the alarm bells and told you everything was going to be fine, they have been proven wrong today. And they did you a great disservice mindlessly cheerleading for people that were lying to you. But that's never going to happen on this channel. And I hope things do turn around for ARC. I made that clear. If things start sounding good for Druid, I'll tell you I think they're sounding good and I will be excited. But I'm not going to do that unless I'm sure that's going to happen because that is wrong. And, well, if things do turn around for Druid, you want to make sure you're subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel so you don't miss it. Make sure you ring that bell button as well so you actually see the notifications. Additionally, please support my sponsors. They really help out this channel. They help pay me, Gerard, Dan, John, Philippe. And, uh, well, the best way really to help us and support independent journalism is to support Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon, where you get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon, the ability to ask us questions. If you join, like, right now, you might still be able to get in a question for me and Steve from Hardware Unboxed, which I apologize apologize that episode is coming out late because that's just what worked for both of our schedules it is coming though in less than 24 hours and uh yeah you also get exclusive podcasts like die shrink as well if you support us on patreon but enough yammering on no matter what you decide to do or how much support you decide to give thank you for watching <laughs>